Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin. The death cross is here, and life goes on. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. My apologies if the sound quality is not so great in this video. I'm having trouble finding my microphone, but hopefully I will find that relatively soon. So bear with me here. Um, I also should say it's not like my, my microphone quality has ever been that great. So who are we kidding, right? Uh, but anyways, you know, we've talked extensively about the death cross. Obviously, the 50-day going below the 200-day SMA tells you what you already know to some degree, right? The prices have been somewhat bearish over the last 50 days compared to the last 200 days. You can see that we have got, we have the cross, okay? We just had the cross. You can see that it just happened. They crossed at around 40, uh, $43,000. We've also done extensive research into what has happened during prior death crosses. They do not necessarily mean you will have an immediate dump. In fact, if you go back and look, many of them, it actually came with a, a price appreciation in the short term. Now, arguably, many of those times that the price did appreciate, it was not sustained except for the one back in March of 2020. You can see that we had this death cross here back in March of 2020 and price was on the move to the upside. Okay, but when you look at, say, the, the death cross from October of 2019, it actually had a fairly sizable pump fairly sizable. I mean, this was this was nothing nothing to just, you know, scoff at, a modest 44%. I mean, maybe no one's getting out of bed for 44%, but still Bitcoin went up 44%. Now the trend did not change. Um, but there's also been other times when, you know, from the death cross, the price didn't really go that much lower, and instead it ultimately did have a nice move to the upside. So what I would say, you know, as always, we know that moving averages are are lagging indicators. A lot of times they just tell you what you already know, right? I mean, do you have to be told that things have been bearish recently? No, you don't. I mean, you know that they have been because for a while, Bitcoin was, you know, we were playing the game up in here, uh, 50 to 60K or so. This was our playground. And we're no longer in that playground right now. So we don't need to be told that things have been somewhat bearish. We know that. Now, with that said, one nice thing about a death cross is that the next thing you can maybe look forward to is a future golden cross. Now, I don't know how long it'll take. I mean, I've, I've said before that, you know, if, if you look at prior moves, when we say look at like the 20 week SMA and that sort of stuff, we know that historically speaking, at least in recent years, it could take six months before we get above the 20 week and then hold it as support. So the, there's a key distinction there, right? We, you want to hold it as support. It's like over here when we got above the 20 week, we were, we were somewhat bullish, but we were also cautious and said, hey guys, this has happened before, okay? This has happened many times before and we did not hold it as support and it ended up being a fake breakout. I mean, like right here, we went above it, but we did not hold it as support. Here we went above it, but we did not hold it as support. So on this one, we said, hey, we're above it. Now we need to hold it as support. And we did hold it as support. And we said, hopefully we can do it for several weeks. And that would be a very bullish sign. And it was very bullish. Now it, it exceeded, you know, in the short term, it certainly exceeded my expectations. But now we have to look at it and say, well, when can we realistic, realistically get back above the 20 week SMA or hope to get above the 20 week SMA and hold it as support so that maybe we can become bullish again? Well, again, I mean, if you look at prior moves, okay, if you look at prior moves this cycle, from the break of the 20 week here to not breaking it to the upside, but actually or sorry, yeah, break, not, not breaking the 21 week EMA, but then getting back above the 20 week SMA, here it took about 119 days, okay, about 119 days. But how long did it take to test it as support? Whether we held it or not is somewhat irrelevant. How long did it take us to test it as support? It took about half a year, okay, it took about half a year. And then you look here, um, you know, if, if we go to, to when we fell below it here, how long did it take us to test it as support? Well, again, it took about half a year. So what if we were to dubious, and I mean dubiously speculate a similar type move? Well, I mean, we, we, you know, we fell below it on May 10th, the week of May 10th. It's already been 35 days. 
I mean, if it did take half a year to get back above it and then test it as support, we could be looking at Q4 before that happens. So what I would say is, I know it's, it's really easy to get super bullish whenever Bitcoin pumps a few thousand dollars. It's also easy to get somewhat bearish if it drops a few thousand dollars. But I would say that, you know, Bitcoin, as we have discussed many, many times, is, is very, very likely in for a, a much longer cycle than most speculate that it will be. Therefore, it's also likely in for consolidation periods that most people will probably underestimate. In the same way that we spent half a year consolidating in 2019 after the move to 14K, even though you could argue you know, it was a fake, it was a fake bull run, we still spent some time, time consolidating before ultimately trending higher. My argument is that, hey guys, I'm bullish on Bitcoin and I think we're gonna go to 100K, but I, I think we need time. Like, I really do. I think we need time for that to happen. And when I say time, I, I don't just mean like one or two months, okay? I mean, you know, at the very least, I would say, we, you know, I mean, a few, a few weeks ago, when we fell below the 20 week, I said, I think we need at least three to six months of, of consolidation. Okay, and so far we've had about a month. Okay, I mean, if we if we fell below it, we fell below the 20 week here, the week of May 10th, it's now June 19th. So we've had about a week or about a month below the 20 week. So I would say, hey, probably need about three to six months. That's my general window, as short as three months, maybe even taking us to the end of the year of consolidation before we can arguably try to make a push for for you know a new all-time high now if we make a new all-time high before then i will be pleasantly surprised it's not really going to change my my strategy at this phase of the cycle but i would say that what we need is time and lots of it not not just a a week or two uh with the expectation of a v-shaped recovery but as i've as i've maintained for over over a month now since we fell below it we need a significant amount of time. And you know, one could argue that if it does take longer and we don't immediately get back above it, it could make some people bearish, especially if they if they believe that it was gonna go to, you know, really high prices by the end of the year, like three hundred thousand dollars. I know that is thrown around a lot. I know a lot of people that follow say like the stock to flow model are, are expecting $288,000 by the end of the year. Um, but I, I would say that the chances that that happens is relatively low. Uh, if it does happen, then I will, you know, I, then that model, of course, turned out to be a great model. But I would say we need to, we need to be somewhat uh, cautious on, on, you know, 10x predictions um, or almost 10x predictions in, in, in the next six months. If it happens, great, but I wouldn't bet the family farm on it. I, I think that'll cover it. I mean, so we, you know, we discussed, we discussed the death cross um, and you know, I, I mean, it's certainly not a, a bullish indicator, generally speaking. I mean, it's not like, it's not like every time we've had a death cross, it meant the prices were going to immediately skyrocket. Yes, the last time we got one, that is essentially um, exactly what happened. Does that mean it's going to always happen like that? No. I mean, there's some people that cherry pick the last one and say, well, look at the last one. But again, I think it's important to look at all of them and to realize that really no one knows what's going to happen in the short term, uh, but to recognize that Bitcoin's still on the same path uh, that it's always been on. It, you know, it should make it to 100K this market cycle, but I don't think that necessarily has to be in, in 2021. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the premium list. You can find the premium list in the description below if you wanna know how I'm navigating these markets. We talk about a lot of stuff on there that we don't talk about on the public channel, uh, so check that out. Also check out the merch store. You can find a link to that in the description below as well. Thank you for tuning in. Definitely subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.